Yo, what's up guys and welcome back to Boundary Break, the series where I get to show you an exclusive look around the outside of your favourite maps in Rainbow Six Siege. In today's episode, we're going to be checking out Tower, Coastline and Bank. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and leave a like and let me know down in the comments which maps you would like to see in the next episode. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Now getting straight into it with the first map, Tower. Now this map is infamous for being the most hated and the worst map in the entire game. It's got a very unique design, being isolated up in the sky and the only way that you can actually enter the map is from above. So this is going to be an interesting one. Now to start off we're going out of bounds to check out probably one of the most infamous easter eggs in this game and also one of the most clever and well designed ones. If we come to the bird room on the first floor, we'll find this table at the end of the room with a small box that you can actually break open and enter with your drone. Now at first it doesn't seem like there's a lot, just some books and a little shrine with a light, but actually, if you throw a grenade down there to blow up the books, it reveals a whole lot more. This hidden drone hole will take you all the way to a secret room that you can't actually access any other way than through this drone hole. And here we have it. As you can see on the wall, we have the original logo for the box art of Rainbow Six Siege illustrated on the wall, with this cool little statue being cast a shadow onto the wall behind it. Also, over on the far side of the room on the shelf, we have this cool little smoke chibi on the shelf. Now, this isn't the first time a map has had a hidden chibi from an operator in the game somewhere in the map, but this is definitely the coolest and most secret one. Now, although I said before that you could not access the room on foot, through the Power of Siege mods, we can actually enter the room just under the stairs here. And then we can get an awesome and never before seen close up look at the room itself. Jumping off the balcony, we can get a look in the area that's normally out of bounds that shows the glass floor below us, which has a quite a nice view of the city below. There are a couple more of these areas, with my favourite here being the nice indoor garden area below us. Now at first I didn't expect this area to have collision, so when I tried to fall down on it, I was extremely surprised to see that I actually did fall and hurt myself. This gave me an idea to try it out with Sophia, because seeing as how she still has her withstand ability in this version of the game that I'm using, I was able to get back up on my feet. This meant that we could explore up close and personal this out of bounds area, which is quite a nice quaint little garden area. I was able to make my way to the glass floor area that I showed you before. Now this must have been some really strong glass because despite my best efforts, I was unable to break the glass and plummet to my death below. This left me feeling frustrated, so instead I blew myself up. Heading up now to the main spawn on the roof, and it's here we get our first look at the outside of the map. You can see down below us the massive extent of the city that Ubisoft have designed. The level of detail that they've put into all the buildings spanning for many miles is very impressive. Now I wanted to say that the reason that this video was delayed by a little bit is because I was having some troubles with the version of the game that I was playing on. Every time I tried to load up a map, I kept crashing. Which, now that I think about it, is a strange coincidence because it's not the first time someone's crashed on a tower. Looking down below here, I wanted to see if I could actually reach the floor. Now, I've tried this in other maps and the floor does not have a collision box. So I was quite intrigued to find that when I fell, I collided with some invisible object in the air and I was able to run around in the sky, unassisted by any mods, for quite a while until I reached the edge of that box and I began to fall to my death. Now as I was falling I saw this strange blue beam shining from below the map and that reminded me of that funny red box that we saw on the underside of Outback. Back up to the top now and I wanted to see how far we could go. Now Tower is one of the few maps that has a terrain that you can see goes on for miles and miles unlike other maps where you are enclosed in by buildings or terrain surrounding you. This is one of the features of the map being so high up in the sky, similar to Skyscraper. 
I was running and running for quite a long time, seeing all of the many hundreds and hundreds of buildings down below us. Once again, it's impressive to see the level of detail that Ubisoft put into their map designs in parts of the map that people won't normally pay attention to or see themselves. Now my attention was focused to the horizon where you could see mountains in the distance. I was running towards this needle like tower over to my left and that was until I realised that the mountains in the skybox were actually 2D and out of my reach. I kept on going to see how far I could reach and I was nearing the needle tower below us and you can see once again the skybox ahead of us and I was running until I died. Heading over now to map number 2, Coastline. Now Coastline has a special place in my heart as it's my favourite map in the ranked pool today. Coastline is bright and sunny and colourful, just like any beach resort you'd imagine. Now I wanted to take the time once again to say, if you are enjoying, please do leave a like, as this series does take a while for me to produce, and let me know once again which maps you would like to see in episode number 4. But anyway, without any further ado, let's go take a look. Starting off straight away at the main entrance, and if we turn around behind us, we will head out of bounds for the first time, through the car, and out onto the street. You can see the lovely castle that's up on top of the hill, but unfortunately, we are not able to get our character high enough in order to reach it. Heading out into the sea now, over to the west, and you can see, I think the birds are having a bit of trouble flying upside down and sideways. If we ignore them and head out further into the sea, we can see the beautiful area that coastline is, with beautiful blue waters and sunshine. As we head out further into sea, we get to this nice lighthouse on the rock, but it's instead what is behind the lighthouse which I think is of most interest. This yacht here has long been the subject of debate among Siege fans of whether it is the same yacht from the yacht map. Now just a point of interest before we go further, which when I noticed it, I thought I was going insane, but the boats actually bob up and down, which is a cool little detail. But anyway, you can see here, although it's slightly scaled down, I am going to once and for all definitively settle this argument. This yacht is exactly the same as the yacht in Yacht. Now that may be a bit of a tongue twister, but I've spent ages examining this. All of the little details on the yacht, all of the notches and all of the shapes, and it is exactly the same. Past the yacht now, and if we head out even further into the sea, we get to this El Sergio cruise ship. Another point of interest is that it's also actually moving. Now I'm not sure what El Sergio is, if it means anything, but this is another cool little detail that many people won't have seen or have paid attention to it themselves. I kept on heading out further and further into the sea to check out these small islands over here, but unlike Jesus, who can actually walk on water, I cannot and I swiftly died. Heading over now to the poolside spawn on the map, and it's here we can enter the wall like platform 9 and 3 quarters and get underneath the map. Now there's really not much down here other than some rocks in the distance that you can see have been used for the terrain, but something that I did notice, which I'm really confused to see, was this small suitcase underneath the map. Now I don't know whose suitcase this is, but I hope that they know that they're never getting it back. Back above the surface once again, and I wanted to show all you Coconut Bra fans that it is still possible to get on top of the purple tarps on Coastline. You just need some Siege mods. Now I'm sure if you were able to access them, you'd abuse this spot once again, like you always used to. But in all seriousness, it is a cool spot, and it is nice to know that you can still get up here, even if it is with a bit of modding. Heading over now on the eastern side of the map, over to this small town area. Now this is quite a small, beautiful little town, and it's a nice detail for the exterior of the map. There's not too much over here, apart from a few small boats bobbing up and down in the water on the pier, which once again was a cool detail. I did have a further little explore just to check out all of the houses, and although there's really not much to it, it is quite a cool thing to see. Now with coastline out of the way, let's head over to the third and final map for today's video, Bank. Now in contrast to coastline, Bank is actually my least favourite map of all of the maps in the ranked pool. That doesn't take away from the fact it's still a cool map in terms of its design. Once again, if you've reached this far, thank you very much, I hope you have enjoyed, and let's go take a look around Bank. 
Now starting off outside the front entrance, I wanted to first go pay a visit to the most beautiful and sexy man in the whole world, the Red House Man. Just look at him and his beautiful smile. On the street past the fence, if we head out behind it, we can see the outside of the map on the street behind it. Now this street very quickly diverts into two paths, either to the left to this floating building, or to the right to this floating building, which looks like a boss battle. I decided first to venture out to the building on the right, which was quite creepy as the buildings fell away, as well as the floor, leaving just the road and the two buildings ahead of me. As I got closer to the building and saw the reflection in the windows, I very quickly realised that this reflection was actually of the map itself, but not where I was currently standing, instead back inside of the map on the roof of Bank. Now this was interesting to see, as I went around the corners, the reflection seemed to change to show a different angle of the same roof. This was quite weird and it took me a while to realise what was actually going on, as you can see some of the details changing as I go around the corner. Moving a little further away, and it was cool to see that Ubisoft have added your mum's dildo into the game for this map. As we head over to this second building, you can see the same reflections in the windows. Heading back over to the front street where we were before, and it was here where I found something that I haven't been in years. Moving on, and if we decide instead this time to go to the left, we will see in front of us the floating building, as well as many other buildings on the left. There's not really too much else to say, these buildings are just here as a background design in the outskirts of the map, but it's interesting to see how they left some of them up in the sky. If we make our way through the buildings on the left, we can begin to loop back around to the alley access spawn. Past this white van with no wheels, if we turn behind us, we can see the alley access spawn. Now for some reason here, I was actually clipping underneath the map, so as I entered the inside of the map once again, I was able to see underneath to the garage. Finally outside now on the jewellery front spawn, if we turn behind us and go to the street in this direction, we can see the buildings once again that lead on behind us. There's not too much to say, but I did spot this floating silhouette of a helicopter that didn't seem to be moving, which I'm not sure how safe that is. Heading even further down the street, and it's here where the detail begins to fall away as we reach corners of the map that we were never meant to be and that we aren't able to actually see from the main part of the map. This is pretty much all of the rest of the map of Bank. One thing I was surprised by was the fact that Bank is actually floating up in the sky. Unlike other maps like House and Chalet, there's no terrain and background. As I reached the end of the street, I found this pharmacy which I decided to go inside and see if I could find some drugs on which I could overdose so this video could finally be over. Once again, I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.